I was drinking water one day when I realized that I started to accumulate so many plastic bottles and I thought, maybe I can find a way to turn my water bottles into something. So I decided to start keeping all of the three liter bottles that I drank. And at this point in time, I had just gotten a 3D printer and I was printing lots of items for my garden. And one day I looked at the 3D printer material that prints, it's called filament, and it occurred to me that the filament looks quite similar to plastic in some way. Well, it is plastic. And if I could just figure out how to turn my 20 water bottles into this filament, then maybe I could print with them. So I started to do some research and I figured out exactly how to do this. And then I printed some stuff. But let me backtrack a bit because there's some things that I left out. The journey along the way to getting there was quite intense. The first thing that I figured out was I needed to melt off the lines on the bottle to make it perfectly smooth. So I turned on the stove top and held the bottle just above the heat until the entire bottle was clear. No lines. And I did this with a lot of bottles. And once that was complete, I had to figure out a way to cut the bottles into even strips because I would eventually need those strips in order to turn it into the filament. So once my bottles were melted, I figured out that I had to cut off the bottom part or the top part, didn't really matter, but I found it worked better with the bottom part as even as I could with a really sharp knife. And that was to get the bottle ready to cut into those strips that I was talking about. And it was harder than you are probably imagining in this moment to get that cut into a perfect circle. You needed to get it into a perfect circle to cut the even strips. But anyway, I got it done. And then the next step came. You're probably wondering now, well, how did I even cut the bottle into even strips? I ended up getting this bottle cutter tool that took me like weeks to figure out how to use. It's not optimal. I tried to 3D print my own. It just didn't work as well. Eventually I realized that I needed the right angle and a slow and steady pace, which is what got me the exact cut that I needed. And I also learned that the diameter of the strips had to be a certain length, not too thin, but not too thick. But the thinner the diameter, the harder it was to cut the bottle without breaking the strips. And within this, I learned that there's no rush in this process because every step took me like forever to figure out. But of course it was worth it because I was saving all the turtles, you know? Anywho, once I successfully figured out how to cut the bottles into strips, it was time to actually morph the plastic into the filament. And this truly was the hardest part to figure out and most important because there's no machine that you can buy that does this for you. But there is a community that I joined that shows exactly how to build a machine. It's called the Pedimentor. And if you see my other 3D print videos, I have some long videos and some short videos on YouTube, Snapchat. I go into more detail about the process of building that. This is what that machine looks like. And it took me about four months to successfully build it and get it working. And honestly, it still is a work in progress. If you are interested at all in building your own and trying this at home, you can check my Amazon storefront. I have all of the pieces that you'll need in order to build it listed there. And you can always message me and I'll help you or join the Pedimentor Facebook group. But anywho, it took me about four full months to successfully build this. I became an electrician and an engineer and I ended up getting it working. Honestly, it really still is a work in progress. I recently found out that there's a piece that I can purchase that I attach to my 3D printer that will help me melt my plastic and print at the same time, but I haven't gotten that yet. So right now I'm still kind of struggling through the mechanics of it all. But anywho, I built this machine. It took me four months. I found a lot of insights from the other people building this machine, and I'm still trying to optimize the process so that it becomes much more automated versus manually doing it all myself. And until I get there, I've got to continue on the rest of this story. So I figured out that the sweet spot temp was about 78.5 and that I had to cut the little tips on the front of the strips and insert it into the machine prior to pulling it through. Otherwise the strips wouldn't melt through and I wouldn't be able to pull it. And honestly, that simple fact took me like a month to figure out. But again, those people in that group also building the machine helped me a lot. And soon I was able to pull the filament out of the filament maker and I had plastic from my water bottle. But even each time I go to do it, the plastic breaks on me. I can't find the sweet spot temperature again, even though I know it's 78.5. It's just something happens where I can't attach the filament to my pulley. My pulley won't pull if I do attach it to the pulley. So you guys, like it's a really stressful process, okay? But 
that machine is starting to need some work. I need to fix the front end of the machine so that the extruder piece sits without moving. I need to fix my pulley so that the filament rolls onto it properly without me having to sit there and manually pull it myself. I basically have to rebuild the entire thing if I want this to be sustainable because currently it takes me like a full day to turn just two or three water bottles into filament and the filament isn't even fully even in and of itself. And well, even though it is a little bit ratchet and there is a lot of work to do, I was still able to turn my water bottles into this filament right here. And I'm pretty proud of that. So now that I had the filament ready, it was time to figure out the settings that I needed to actually print properly. And this is currently the hardest part because some printers have a max temperature setting of 250 to 275 like mine. But in order to print with the water bottle filament, you need a printer that goes up to about 300 degrees. And so I could upgrade the hot end, but then the thermostat would also need an upgrade and therein so would the motherboard in order to handle that temperature change. So the easy way would just be to use regular filament, which is known as PLA plastic but this type of plastic is called PET filament and basically if I want to print with exactly the right settings I'll probably need to upgrade and get a new printer altogether hopefully one with the piece that I can attach that will just cut my bottles and then melt them and then print them with all of that good stuff happening at the same time so that I don't have to sit there all day doing it but till then I was still able to print a little bit with the plastic water bottle so I want to show you exactly what I did to try and combat those issues I was able to finally find some sort of sweet spot nozzle temperature and also bed plate temperature that worked in conjunction together that melted the plastic enough to actually be able to print a little bit with it. And I decided that I was going to print a few things for my shrimp tank and my garden. So I wanted to start with these little cubes. And in the middle of so many of the prints, it just stopped printing, which actually meant it stopped extruding the water bottle filament. And I figured it was because the settings weren't optimized to the exact numbers needed to print. And then each time it stopped, I had to clean the nozzle and clean the extruder from any melted plastic that got caught in between. And then I had to replace the nozzle like way too often because every time it stopped printing, the water bottle filament just kept getting getting stuck inside of the nozzle. So even if I went to reprint the items on the next try, the gunk that was blocking up the nozzle wouldn't melt so that the new filament could start extruding through. So I had to end up just replacing it all together. And I had two big bags of 30 0.4 millimeter nozzles in each. And now I'm left with only like three or four. So you can imagine how many times I changed the settings and then tried to print again with the water bottle filament, but I just kept running into the melting and non-printing mess. But in any case, I was still able to realize that if if I want to print properly with my plastic water bottles and have it actually work with even lines printed in a sufficient strong print throughout, I'm gonna have to buy a new printer and make sure that printer can go up to 300 degrees or more and then also get a dual extruder. I just want it to work seamlessly all together. I'm still learning a lot as I go and sometimes it's hard for me to even go back to this project because there's so much to do and I don't really have much guidance in this process. It's kind of just me sitting there hoping that I'll find a forum online that will answer my question and then I have to actually do it myself but I want to make sure that I do it all right so I'll need a new printer and a piece that attaches to my printer in order to melt and print the bottle simultaneously and cut them so this project definitely is a work in progress and I'm still thinking of other ways that I can repurpose my plastic outside of just turning it into filament for my 3d printer so bear with me as I think of all of these ideas but until then I am still really proud of how far I've come with this and I'm not going to give up even though it may seem it just may take a little bit of time for me to be able to get all the nicks worked out and have me printing a a mass amount of items for the garden and for my shrimp tank and for places where people or animals are in need like homeless shelters or the zoo or the humane society anywho thank you so much for watching my channel this week it really does mean the world to me to have you all by my side believing in me and my silly little projects that have now become my entire life and i wouldn't have it any other way thank you so much and i'll see you next week what happened